All right, hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf Your One and Only, and it's been a while since I've uploaded any <laughs> Knights Chronicle gameplay. Last time you guys saw me, I was like around the lower ranks. Then in like an hour, I got to level 30 and was able to beat all the content in the game. Well, probably like an hour or two when I uploaded my first video. And as of right now, I am like a way higher level. I've been playing this for like well, since the game started, nearly since the game started, like a day afterwards, I think. But yeah, a lot of progress has been made. We played on the stream quite often. Sadly, I can't play it a lot right now just because, you know, the whole tooth thing situation going on. But thankfully, there are some new characters that finally arrived, which, you know, kind of took them long enough. You know, I've been ready for another character real soon so there are two new characters i think hold up let's go check the codex i'm pretty sure there's quite a bit of them that just aren't in here shadow guild here they are so we got morgan she seems like she can have some decent stuff um Causes bleeding on her first attack. She has to cause bleeding on her second attack, but attacks up to three people, depending on where you put it. And it removes a buff from target. That could be really nice for, like, really annoying buffs. A third attack. A Norse... A oh, a Norse the enemy's defense. Chance to mark an enemy for... Cannot be revived. For two turns, that's really nice. So, basically, if an enemy has this on them, they can't be revived at all. This is just pretty much the debuff. This is how many turns you have into you have to kill them, you know. Third skill decreases cooldown on. Oh, okay. If the attack fails to kill an enemy. So, that's basically. Two turns down, so that's five five cooldown turns you have to wait. So that's actually pretty good compared to most other like third skills that that does like a high amount of damage and defense the door. So she's not half bad. I might actually go for her. Oh, and she has a really good leader as well. Jesus. What? What about her passive, her level 60 passive? So, inflicts more damage on targets that are bleeding. Increases its caster's attack for two turns when attacking a bleeding target. Stacks up to five times, so you can get 50% attack added on. Especially if you have a multi-attack or counter-attack. So that could actually be pretty decent on her. Applies Demon Sword. Pedal. Huh? To cast her upon killing an enemy. I guess they have it inside of a... I guess they have it inside of the effects and everything. Okay, not have bad of an animation. This is another character that I haven't found yet, which I'm thinking she's probably in Guild, maybe? But her first attack causes Brand and decreases the target's duration, buff duration by one if the target is hidden. So basically what hidden is, your character becomes untargetable, but you can still be hit by AoEs. So remember that. So that's only if she's hidden though. Her second attack does bleeding damage, inflicts additional damage equal to your attack to two additional enemies, causes them to bleed. If hidden. So I'm guessing that there's really something in here that just makes her hide over and over again, which I'm guessing this is. But hold on. Alright, inflicts 300 damage and additional damage when you're attacking attack types 
Okay, not half bad. Oh, increases caster's attack by 40% for one turn if the attack kills. Okay, not half bad, not half bad. She has a really good win leader too. Hold up, let's look at her. Oh, that's our level. 60 talent. What? Oh, I guess I was reading it wrong. Alright, so high is the caster for one turn at the start of the wave. Has a 50% chance of hiding when using skills, which is actually pretty nice. When using skills... Oh, well, I started from there. Poison three targets. Wait, is this a skill or a freaking... Oh. <laughs> My bad. Poison three targets for two turns if the tag <laughs> if the caster is hiding at the start of the turn. <laughs> That's what it was. Whoops. Alright, her level 60 talent is She gains resolve, which means she can't be killed for from like one fatal hit. Recovers all of her HP and blinds all enemies for one turn. Once resolve is activated. Only happens once per battle. Inflicts. Oh yeah. Once per battle is just pretty much the whole battle. It's not per like wave. Inflicts 40% additional damage when the target has damage over time inflicted on it. So that's going to be basically your poison. Okay, hold up. Let me double check here. Okay, yeah, we did miss something. Whoops, my bad. 50% chance change. Oh, that's I think that's a typo. 50% chance to apply Demon Sword Bloody Petal to caster when attacking. Not bad. Even though I still don't know what the whole Bloody Petal thing is, I'm hoping it's inside of the effects or buffs. Revives with... Ooh. 50% HP and becomes a Berserk. So I'm guessing Berserk just increases all this. Yeah. She gains a counter, gains multi-strike, gains damage resist once she becomes Berserk. Okay, that's not half bad. So she is a pretty decent damage dealer. Alright, let's go over here and see her. Yeah. Okay, now we need to find this other character, which I don't know where he is. He's not in um Shadows. He's not in the Shadow Guild. He's not in uh White Knights. He's not in the Dark Knights either. He's not even in here. So he must be in here somewhere. Oh. So now they added these for characters coming. This is the last character, Clyde. Alright, let's see what you have. Oh, so he's more of a tank. Okay. Has a chance to taunt for one turn. Has a chance to decrease the enemy's attack by two turns when the... Well, if the enemy's taunted. My words. Tripping over themselves. 50% chance to put the enemy to sleep. And a chance to... Huh. Has a chance to brand them too. Okay, that could be decent together. Alright, so final breath. Has a chance to... Oh. Hold on. This is death status. Is it Loomering death, death status? I gotta have to look that back up because I'm pretty sure this is death status. If it's not, then I'll, then I'll stop talking. <laughs> On targets for two turns, if they have any debuffs, apply... Apply Ghost Girl to the caster for two turns. Gains immunity to penetration damage. Oh, penetration damage not included. 
damage to immunity. So two turns of damage immunity, that's actually pretty decent. I'm not sure if it's going to get removed after the first attack, or is it going to last for two turns. I'm pretty sure it's going to be removed after the first attack. So once you get hit, damage immunity is all gone. It just lasts for two turns, just in case the enemy doesn't attack you at all. If an enemy removes Ghost Girl from the caster, the enemy falls asleep for two turns. Decent. What is his leader? Eh, his leader's okay. Hold on. We should go right here instead. Okay. His leader's decent. Just had to double check some things. Alright, so what's his passive? Chance to taunt all enemies. One turn applies. This is basically 100% evasion to all allies for one turn if the ghost girl effect is activated. Oh, if the character is affected by ghost girl. And his level 60 talent is changes. Oh, I guess it was change and not a typo. Changes an ally's lower HP ratio to that of the caster if the ghost girl is activated. Oh, okay. Decent, decent. Not a huge fan of him, though. The only reason I would summon for his banner is just for Ashley. Because there are banners going on right now. So I can show you guys the progress of my team. Whoops. There we go. So this is my team at the moment. I'm going to be replacing her real soon just because I got Rue this morning of my double SR. And if you guys don't know, Rue is one of the best healers in the game, especially for PvP. She's literally one of the best healers, in my opinion, that is. So I'm happy with that. I'm definitely going to be building her up. So after a few days played, this is all the stuff I have. You know, I'm slowly getting somewhere. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Okay, I'm trying to sell all those. So I'm able to do mostly all the... Well, I'm actually able to do all the special dungeons. But the adventure dungeons are a different story. Because adventure dungeons are multiplayer and solo. Well, speaking of the devil. Pretty sure this is a solo. Oh, yeah, here she is. Never mind. So she isn't a guild reward, she's a venture dungeon character. Oh god. That's fun. I won't be getting her anytime soon. At least so I get all my team together. And this game is extremely easy to progress in and level up your characters. It's like insanely easy and takes a short amount of time, which is why so many players are around because it's so easy to get into. So let's go ahead and summon so we can get close to ending out the video. <sighs> More interest in Ashley. Because Ashley's one of the highest damage dealers in the game. So, I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope I get him. Because he's a character I've been after for like so long. Oh. Who could it be? Okay, never mind. This is one of the best White Knight healers. And I'm fine with that. Alright. Why do I always get the opposite? <laughs> Because I remember summoning on the Dark Knight banner and I got Damien for some reason. But that's dope. My luck is on today, jeez. 
and the rest of them are going to be SRs and lowers. So you get tier rewards now for all of this, which is really nice. So all these weren't going to be interesting. All right, let's keep going. They definitely made some better banners from whatever crap they were doing last time. Ah, darn. This is a crappy banner for me. And nothing gets, like, better inside of the banners. Once you... Like, once your summon starts out with SRs, you might as well just skip through them. Just because... They start from highest rarity to lower. Thank God I saved all my crystals. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Cross my fingers. Okay, nope. I tried. Jeez, man. Can I get a break here, game? You know, I just want Ashley. I'll do one summon non daughter banner. Ah, no. I guess that was only my lucky draw was her. Well, at least I can use all these for food. Well, I don't really want her. I'm just being honest. I really don't want her. I mean, I'm not going to force myself to summon on this banner. I'm just going to force myself to summon on this banner. <laughs> Actually, nah. I think Ashley would probably be the best way for me to go. Sorry for those of you guys who want me to like summon for her. I technically, you know, just looking for Ashley. Can I get somebody actually on a future page? Okay, yeah, there we go. I've never gotten like two of those in a row, and I doubt it's gonna happen anytime soon. So he's actually pretty decent. All right, sweet. Wait, did you just say Saya? Is that the ghost girl that we just summoned for? <laughs> alright, alright. One, one more banner before I actually end out the video. Just, just one more. <laughs> I'll finally do the Morgana. Let's see what I get. Okay. Oh, nope, didn't get her. <laughs> what do we get next? That's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, wait, hold up. What? Okay, that's the first time I got <laughs> a double SR in the roll. That's nice. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. <laughs> now I actually end up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. That's... That's a first for me. So, one thing in this game. Gold is extremely high costing. Like, it is the number one thing that will, like, destroy you. Like, if you run out of gold, that's, that's just pretty much it. You, you gotta wait, like, a whole day for the next, like, gold dungeon to come around. But here's the thing I hated about these um, events that they're doing. These events cost me gold. Look how much gold, man. Especially when you're when you're not like a well player. If you're not willing like banners and stuff like that, you will not have like a lot of gold and stuff like to be able to do all this. So the free players will have to kind of struggle with their gold a little bit. Especially if you're trying to help your guild level up too. That's even more troublesome on that note. So yeah, we're dealing with events that cost you gold. Which is always fun, right?
All right, with that done, uh, let's start mixing. There goes our six stars. Those are all out of the way. I'm not sure who I want to work on now, but I'm sorry, you're gonna have to wait. But yeah, let me go do the Vulcan Dungeon now. Now the Vulcan, the Vulcan Dungeon should probably be done every single day, just because it gives you free four star characters. And unfortunately, it's not half off right now, which is the worst matters. But I have 11 potions, so I can just pretty much farm that. I, could, I can say this. This game is very addicting, kept me interested so far. But they don't have enough interesting events, which leads me just to grinding and getting off. <laughs> Can't wait for them to do actual decent events. Because that's gonna be like really fun. Cause I know they can, I know they can do a lot better than this. I mean, it's owned by the same people who made Seven Nights. Well, not same people who made Seven Nights. The same people who are published, who published Seven Nights. And I know they can do way better. I just have yet to see it. But I do know they're going to start doing collabs sooner or later down the road. Which I'm going to start saving up crystals again. Sadly, I didn't get Ashley from this banner. I'm not going to continue to just throw crystals at it. I kept saying that these banners do need like milestones. Like, pretty much progressing you up to like a selector ticket or something like that. But I don't have to pressure myself to get Ashley because at the end of the month you get a free knight selector. So you can choose from any of the knights and you can get one of them. So I don't have to stress over it. I can just wait that whole month and just keep logging in. As long as I remember that is. <laughs> The main dungeons that should be ran every day are Goad and Avulsion Dungeon. If you don't have the um, stamina for it or you want to do like Adventure Dungeon set, I would recommend saving up your crystals and buying potions. Stamina potions are probably really needed. Alright, I'm going to just stop the Jeez. And the best thing about this game is that it has manual PvP, so you can just pick your own skills you want to use against people instead of the whole game just autoing it. If this was made by the same people who made Seven Nights, I would have a lot of questions for them. <laughs> just because, you know, I wish I could could have done the same as Seven Nights, and Seven Nights wouldn't have got repetitive. Only reason I hated like auto pvp inside of seven nights it's just because the enemies are so unpredictable uh, and plus you know there's a lot of characters with like shields and crap on invincibilities and crap like that and you want to kill them off first but your characters choose to kill off other things it's basically just full-on rng at that point that's exactly the reason why I stopped playing Seven Nights. The PvP was just too unpredictable. Just wasn't a huge fan of it. Almost had my full fire team done. Okay, I hate this character. I hated him so much inside of the freaking rune dungeon. Just because he kept dodging every single attack and he keeps torturing me. Hey. 
But hopefully, uh, the game is successful in the future. Because I'm definitely going to keep playing it. It's just that I didn't upload a lot of videos about it just because I was like extremely busy at the time. And I would stream it a lot, so some of you guys should, you know, follow the stream if you want to. But as of right now, I'm not really streaming all that often, just because of, you guys know, the whole broken tooth thing. And sometimes the painkillers aren't kicked in by the time I'm like, by the time my stream schedule is like, up. Oh. Sorry, that was my alarm. But now and then I'll try and stream when I can. But at the moment it's kind of difficult to do. And I don't want to sit there through that whole pain. Just making all these ouch and painful noises the whole time. I know some of you guys really don't mind. You guys support the stream either, either way. But still, for myself, it would, it would get annoying for me. And plus I would have to continue talking instead of keeping my mouth shut and, you know, putting less pain on it. I mean, right now, my painkillers are kicked in, so I'm taking advantage of it while I can. So, the only reason I know how to you know, progress really fast in this game is just because I played um, played a little bit of Summoner Wars for over nearly a year. And Summoner Wars kind of prepared a lot of players for this type of game. And it also prepared people who have played um, Seven Nights. Except for I don't think Seven Nights had runes. So if you played Seven Nights and Summoner Wars, you can get into this game pretty easily. It's not really all that difficult. Even if you haven't played them, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's a lot of people who are streaming the game on Twitch, so you guys can feel free to go in there and ask them. There's a lot of my guild members who actually pretty much know a lot of things about it, too. Uh, oh yeah, I do have a guild. Did I even show the name? Uh, the guild name is Team Lazy. If you guys are interested in joining the... Pretty much playing the game. The max members a guild can have is 30 members from what I can see at the moment. But right now we're focusing on guild skills and everything and maxing that out. Alright, hold on. Do we get new event stuff now? Yes, we do. Finally, a new event page. I was just waiting for Growth Dungeon to get that half off, you know? Just don't mind me. Just been trying to save all my stamina until then. Don't see that happening anytime soon. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's go ahead and up you. You're probably the best bet for like overall things. Oh, well, fire, fire team wise. Let's say that. All right, where is she? One of the reasons I say she's like really good for PvP, it's just because every turn she removes a shield <laughs> and invisibility. Well, every one of her turns. She removes damage immunity and a shield, so you pretty much can't protect your team at all. So any of those characters that pretty much shield your team for damage are basically going to be useless when Ruse like around. So if anything, I usually build agility on my healers, especially if they have like turn-based things. And every turn, she gets rid of a uh, abnormal effect like status pretty much like a debuff on your allies if you get her level 60 talent which i'll be gunning for really soon so yeah man easy game easy game 
Um, I don't think I'm gonna have five, unfortunately. So I don't think I can level her up. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that means I gotta wait. I'll probably have enough crystals by... Let's give it a few. Oh, never mind. Jeez. Um, I don't want to use those right now because then I would have to grind an XP dungeon. I, I guess I'll do like two or three rounds of XP dungeon so I can max her. Just because you, when you get a character, you want to max them out just to get the crystals. Because crystal gaining is actually pretty easy. It's just that you need to do the XP dungeon as much as you can just to get like these rainbow mons like rainbow mons is pretty much like overall like xp increase um elemental xp mons just go to their same elements and boost it up even better just like the common thing you know They're not really all that long either. I'd say once you come into the game and grind for like an hour or an hour and a half, you'll pretty much be pretty much set with a whole team at that point. And the more you log in, the better the rewards it gets. I don't think they, re yeah, they don't like reset your calendar at the end of the month like some games did. Dragon Blaze. Dragon Blaze used to do that, but now they fix it to where you don't have to worry about that anymore. So, no more logging in for the whole month just to have your freaking whole calendar reset. For Dragon Blaze, that is. Which, I really hope a lot of games don't do that. <laughs> Because that was actually pretty annoying. And I know a few games that still do that, which is not a smart choice for them to do. They should just wait for players to finish the table themselves, but yeah, they also put characters on those tables and their shards and fragments and stuff like that. Sort of like the normal hero charge thing, which you know a lot of people dislike. Okay, I'm not getting any of my um, Rainbow Mons here. What is going on? Did they change something on me? Oh, yeah, he's still there. Alright, let's do one more run. I'm like, geez, man. Let me finish her. <laughs> Why are you guys keep keeping me from doing this? So, my goal for Damien who's one of the White Knights, um, I'm trying to get him to a stand point where he can do a lot of damage, but also give him some evasion. I'm looking for evasion runes, and that's like really difficult to do, considering that, like I said, the growth dungeon isn't half off at the moment. Like the first week of the game opening, growth dungeon was just half off through the whole thing, and that was a freaking amazing. And the Hell Rune Dungeon, well, the Rune Dungeon on Hell Mode is extremely good for leveling up. Like, you will get to level 60 in, like, a few hours. Well, not a few hours, uh, like, an hour and a half. Max, let's say that. Uh, okay, let's see. Will you be finished? I normally start from the bottom and work my way up, but today's opposite day for me. <laughs> Don't you judge me. I've been wanting this character just because I love her third skill. I love the way it looks. And this character is kind of annoying to deal with inside of PvP too. She charms off her first attack. Charm is basically you can't, your character can't attack. It's basically like a stun. Let's say that. Which I was thinking it would 
be where they would turn against their teammates and fight with me, but no. I guess that would be broken. And her second skill also does the same thing. Her third skill defense ignores and stuff like that. She's, I think she stacks a few things too. Uh... Oh, so that's how you see the talent table. Okay, that's nice. Okay, thank god I figured that out. Because I usually try to figure out the whole table thing to try to get to it so I can see everything early. Let's see. Oh, she has some decent things. What is this on to? This is on her second skill. Uh, not a huge fan of that. Just saying. Nobody would ever pick hide for this character. If anything, we'll choose one of these depending depending on how we build her I'm pretty depending on what runes we get and here are pretty much all her enhancements for her stars and geez does she get some decent enhancements I'm pretty sure this is for all characters though hold on I Yeah, they all just get the same. Oh, nope, never mind. I think they do get different things. Or maybe I wasn't paying attention. No, Vols doesn't pay attention. Alright. <laughs> so, yeah, they all get the same thing when it comes to, like, enhancing the character. So, enhancing the characters, I'm pretty sure starts around... Uh... Let's just say some six stars. I don't think it starts around a certain, like, level. Pretty sure it just starts when you're six stars. But I could be wrong, because I don't really enhance all of my characters. Or pay attention to it all that much. But, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Except for me just sitting here with all these useless runes I need to get rid of. I've just been farming that dungeon through that whole first week. So, yeah. With that said, hope you guys enjoyed. I might upload more of these videos now and then, depending on how you guys um, like them. Just leave me a comment down below and I'll uh, think about it. <laughs> I'll definitely upload some more for you guys if you guys actually enjoy these. But until then, I'll see you guys next time on the next video on live stream. Peace out.